Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our second part of presenting China's accession to the World Trade Organization. Now, we will take a look at the economic changes in China, caused by its membership into the WTO. in the past decade have proved that China's accession has not only promoted its economic development, but also made China economic ties with its trading partners ever closer. A new global order is emerging, with China being a main driver of the shift of economic power towards Asia as an emerging market. The membership of China to the WTO has contributed to China's status as the number one exporter in the world, the world's two, number two importer, the de developing world's largest recipient of FDI, and the world's second largest economy. China's WTO accession has made China a country of planned economy into the mainstream of the market economy. WTO also changed the whole business environment in China. Transparency was something not very long in China for a long time, and it didn't exist in the Chinese dictionary in political and social terms. Over the past decade, China has grown from the sixth to the second largest trading country in the world and its imports have increased by 4.7 times. The negotiation, including China's WTO accession, can make a difference of the international relations, especially international trade and economic relations. Moreover, we will take a look at the worldwide influence China's accession to the WTO had and still has. Next we are going to concentrate us on the change of the WTO caused by China's accession. Furthermore we firstly explain what happened the first 15 years since China became a member of the WTO. It's been 10 years since China joined the World Trade Organization, or WTO, and that became possible only after 15 years of negotiations and policy promises. Now observers in the West say many of those promises seem like empty talk. Judging by the expressions of the past 10 years, I think the answer to the first question, whether China has and will keep its promises, is sadly no. The United States Congressional Executive Commission on China held a hearing in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday to discuss the issues. 
The Office of the United States Trade Representative noted in a report that the Chinese regime changed many policies during the first five years of WTO membership, but after 2006 started to back away from the kinds of market reforms it had promised. Those include embracing WTO principles of market access, non-discrimination and transparency. Western experts at the hearing said it's harming the U.S. and other countries' economies. Given its size and economic influence, China's refusal to abide by many of its WTO commitments not only harms the U.S. and third country economic interests, but threatens to undermine the legitimacy of the WTO and the international rules-based trading system. A Chinese democracy activist now based in the U.S., Wei Jingsheng, explains why he thinks it would be hard to enforce WTO rules in China. China's law is understood to be a tool of the party officials. Only when it's thought to be beneficial to the party officials will they carry out the law. If there is no benefit, they will not enact the law. So there is no way for the WTO to control the economic behavior of the Chinese regime. U.S. Congressman Chris Smith pointed out human rights is a key issue. Unless you get the human rights piece right, which includes labor rights, uh, it's a fool's errand. You are enabling a dictatorship to simply sign and say, we'll follow these rules. Then when they don't, how do you enforce them? Finally, we are at the end of our today's topic, China's way to the WTO. Thank you for your attention. I hope you have learned something. Goodbye. Open Gangnam Style Gangnam Style Nachin and Dasaro und Inga Jogging Yoja Kopi Hanjane Yoyur Anapum